I was born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, on the 25th of August, 1959. Rio de Janeiro is, um, naturally speaking, a wonderful city. Uh, natural beauties, uh, the beaches, the mountains, and uh, the climate also always some warm weather. I was born by the beach in Copacabana, so um, I started playing all kinds of sports on the beach. We have beach all year round there. Uh, and it's, it's a wonderful city, but uh, you know, recent years, uh, uh, the problems in our country, difference uh, between the people, poor people, rich people, and the violence, kind of, uh, I would say, make Rio a, quite a violent city. And besides the, uh, the beauties, uh, the social problems right now is uh, what worries more, most of people who live in Rio. I still live in Rio. My, all my family lives in Rio. And I you know I I was you know, grew I grew up in Rio with all my, my my brothers and every everyone a lot of friends there but a lot of people live in Rio because of the the violence right now that's our main concern about Rio and and the city we love. I'm not sure I'm confident. I, I, I'm sure that I have to do something, so I'm trying hard to, to do, do something that's in my possibilities. Uh, I started that job in south of Brazil, in Curitiba. Now we are working hard in Rio because it's the largest city. Uh, we will have the Pan Am Games this year in Rio, and I think it's, it's going to be an opportunity for the youngsters to see a lot of idols from the sport, a lot of sports being played, not just volleyball, but a lot of sports being played. So one more opportunity for us to use, for the government to use, to uh, involve youngsters in the, in the activity of sports. And it's a kind of part of a very important part of the education and it's one of the things that should help to, uh, to, to um, make this gap a little smaller and to give opportunity to these kids that are, have no opportunities. They are much involved in violence, in drug dealing and things like that. So I, I think sports should be a, a, a great opportunity, a great way for them to, to take instead of the, the ways they are taking right now. Most, most of all, uh, the example we, we tried or the story I tried to tell in the book is about preparation. I think for whatever you do in your life, you have to prepare yourself very well. Whether you are a volleyball team and the highest level, you have to prepare and prepare and prepare again. So it's about instruction, instructing yourself about your activity. And uh, I talk about instruction, education, and uh, I use sports as an, an, an example. And uh, the title is uh, Transformando Suor in Oro. In Portuguese, that means uh, turning sweat into gold. That's the main idea of uh, how you prepare yourself to, to reach whatever goal you have. It's a gold medal, it's a, a good job, it's a good level of life or whatever. So, uh, you know, it's a process. The whole thing was a story. I, I, I was kind of uh, a bit shy about writing the book because writing a book it's, seems like a very important thing to someone to, to do it, but it was uh, the fruit of... Uh, or the product of the, the curiosity of many people about what we've been doing all these years. So I tried to put on the book uh, what we, 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 we've lived, the good things we lived, uh, the problems we had, and uh, you know, the, the traps we, we went in. And uh, it was for Brazil a bit success. I didn't expect so much. We sold more than 100,000 books. That's uh, a lot of books in Brazil. So I think people are very interested in sports in our story and uh, and maybe taking some lessons, taking some questions about what we wrote, what I wrote on the book. I think before talent, uh, work, determination, perseverance is always more important. How many people we've seen with a lot of talent that reached almost nothing. I would put uh, work, you know, giving everything you, you have inside, then bit of talent, more or less, but you have to have some, and passion. All this involved in passion. I mean, making uh, what you do with 100% of intensity, that's uh, what takes you to the higher level. So I think this is a, the kind of a generic f 
formula if there is a formula for success, but I think success is about giving everything you have and exploiting the whole talent you've you've got. That's the main most important thing. It's not about just winning and losing, but giving what, whatever you have and making whatever is possible to reach your goals. I do think that uh, uh, a lazy diamond or you have the shy for, for a while and it will sometimes make an illusion that oh that's but to to have results in whatever activity it, it all depends in in work in in giving more and you know and I think the the real talent in people is having the uh, capability having the the will to work hard in one direction I have a goal and the I think the the, the truth talent of someone is having the possibility, having the capability of working very hard towards that direction. I think that's a, the, the thing that people look in other people to take part of that, their teams, in a sport teams, in a, in a company, in a business company or whatever. You know, people who are willing to work hard, who are willing to give 100%, you know, and who can do that in a daily basis. I think this is the more import, most important thing. Each, as we talked before, each day is it's harder because there are so so many traps all over. You know, people saying that they are the best, people saying that oh it's, they are unbeatable or so or so, and I think it's every time is it's more difficult to to con not to convince but to keep in their minds that the most important thing is not that they are great players. It's not important to be great. It's important to be very well prepared. You can be, oh, this is an awesome player. But if you're not well prepared, if you're not, you know, develop yourself every day, you'll be beaten you know, sooner than you think you are. And, of course, every team and every cycle has got an end. We have to try to, to keep motivating, to change something, and to you know, build some new differential to try to, to keep our, our, our level of playing. But I think the most important thing is to uh, all, never forget about uh, it's not being you, you. You are not best. You, in a moment, you can be the best if you are the most prepared team. If you are uh, the team, I mean, uh, a group of team, the collectivity working, not just some great individual players. That's you no. Know, I study a lot about uh, history, not just about war history experiences of uh, uh, great leaders in business companies or in, in different environments, but about great teams. Why did they win so much? Why the Soviets won in the 80s? Why the Polish team won in the 70s? Why the Italian team was so dominant in the 90s? Why the Americans won in the 80s? So, first of all, they, are, they were a team. Maybe when they forgot that they were a real team, they, they depended on some individualities, they, they, that was the, the end of the cycle. Now I can remember some situations when, for example, the Italian team was playing the World Championship in Brazil, a situation that was very clear in my mind. And their opposite player was not playing that good in the beginning of the tournament. Now Andrea Zossi was not playing that good and Jenny was playing good, but Jenny was always saying, no, we will need him, we will need you, you have to be prepared, and so on. And during the, I remember him telling me, I'm doing my role part here, but he'll come when the time comes, he'll be very important for us in the, during the tournament. And things like that are very, very important, I think, in, in the long term. That, that, that makes a difference on the team. Why teams win, why teams keep winning, and build cycles, and other teams are just good teams that win once in a while. What made myself more proud in my team during all these years is that, uh, first of all, they were a team, and I think they uh, they build their confidence in winning in such difficult uh, tournaments and such small differences because they believed that they have worked maybe more than the others. They have worked so much that they w would not give up what they were looking for. And each day this is more difficult because Everyone's trying to beat us. Everyone's trying to work harder. Everyone's got Brazil as a, 
as a reference right now. And uh, we don't have anyone to look at. We have to look at ourselves and try to be better than we were the year before. And that's a very uh, a tough competition against yourself every time. You know? And all the traps, all the uh, media that's involved in all these things and, uh, and all the pressure that's involved also. Sometimes you say, no, it's enough because uh, the pressure is so, so, so big. And yeah, right now we, we are in a moment that uh, we have one more time to look inside ourselves and, and see if we still uh, want thing and wishing to pay the price that uh, we have to pay to keep in the, you know, our team in the, the highest level. It's, it's not easy after winning for so long. And in a different rule, I once heard from one of the best players in the world, the history of volleyball, Kach Grider, he said that our cycle was so impressive because we won in a different rule from other teams and with the, the rally point system that, that make that all the teams are so near right now. A, a stronger team mm, sometimes won't be the one who is a little bit weaker because the, the rule will allow the weaker team to you know, just go to the serve and risk everything and, and win when win for example, a, a match, and that will you know, make the difference. Uh, and the old rules, you could, you, you would have more time to to work out on on the weaker team, and and that's uh, I think it's very impressive how the team could manage to to hold this whole thing in this kind of rule. Every time teams are coming closer and closer. Teams who are working very hard. I think the Polish team is coming closer. French team is 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 giving a lot of great examples of how you can play without being giants or physically so skilled. I think uh, Bulgarian teams got so much talent and they're working very hard. They are, have some very powerful youngsters. Uh, Russia is trying to you know, put all all those talents they have have always had together. The Italian team is looking for a new face right now, for, for a new team, but they are always very dangerous. Uh, U.S. is always a very um, organized team, very disciplined, and they, have, they are working well. They have a new environment to, to work out, and I think they are more motivated right now. So there are so many teams that are very, very close, but they've been close. I, I did not forget Serbia, for example, they, but they've been very close to us all these six years. No, we won, but we won a different by the difference of two points. Many of, of these tournaments, and, uh, and one of the our more, most impos impressive records that during these six years, now seven years, uh, we played with Serbia, Montenegro, about our oh, Serbia, about um, twelve times or something like that. We never lost to Serbia. I mean, when you play a team such a strong team like this, you you win, you, you lose. Sometimes you can uh, even w win more times than you lose. But it's you know the confidence we build that it, we could beat and that the way they play that was so adapted to us. But we have other teams that are most uh, how do you say in Italian bestianere. Uh, we have some more tough times beating some different teams. Those taller and stronger teams for us they they make more harm in our in our team. So we have to keep working hard and keep our focus on being better than we were and before to try to keep our our pace.